At the tail end of skirmish season, Yoji fatigue was starting to gain momentum. The deck actually took down a couple skirmish events, and with Oldham's LL retirement on the horizon, the deck was poised to explode. But just as quickly, poor Yoji's legs were cut out from under him, Jorona Brutality was brought back, and all of a sudden, weapon-based fatigue no longer was attractive. But he's not out just yet, he just needs to adapt a little bit. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and Go Again. Fabulous castings for checking in once again. Today, talking poor Yoji here. Well, may maybe not poor. But yeah, poor Yoji here. He was actually picking up steam at the end of skirmish season, pulled down a couple of events, and that kind of raw fatigue weapon hammer deck was looking pretty good, especially with Oldham rotating out. It looked to be that Yoji would pick up at least a, a good portion of those players, potentially. But then with the BNS announcement that took Icelander and Oldham out, we also brought Drone back, and all of a sudden, Yoji's weapon-based fatigue didn't look as good anymore. So the objective today is to kind of kind of talk about obviously why, but then why I think Yoji's not completely out, even in a six drone meta, how he can still close. Now, real quick, I just want to remind everybody about Fab Foundry's three-year anniversary sale going on right now, 15% off Fab 2.0 singles, so everything from Uprising onwards. It ends after this weekend, so it's good through this weekend. So if you're looking for stuff, in the market, 15% off puts most stuff below TCG player. It's worth your time to go check out, see if they have anything you want. And when you do go, please use the discount code below. I get a little kickback from that, which then I kick right back to good old Travis. All right, so Yoji Fatigue. Now, how does this deck, how, how did the deck work? How does the deck work? The, the idea is pretty simple. Yoji has a ton, a belly full of health, if you will. And it really just focuses on Titan's Fist, and then I've seen most of them run Steel Blade Buckler over the Ram's Head. Uh, that's really just, it's really just easier to do that. It just kind of gives you more of a math health. And, you know, you can run Staunches and stuff like that with, sure, you, you can absolutely do the Ram's Head. I've run them both ways, and Steel Blade Buckler, Buckler does seem to be better. But when he, when he sits down, that's 22 plus 3 plus 3 plus three, plus two, and plus one. That's a lot of health to chew through. And then of course he tends to run life gain stuff, Sigil of Solace at a very minimum, and then running a whole boatload of D-Reacts. Blue Unmovable, for example, can still help fuel him. All right, it's an obvious Guardian staple. Oasis Respites, so on, so on, so on. I even tried to build at one point where I was running Blue Oasis Respite. I've since moved on from that. But it did its it did its thing, and it was just a lot of health to chew through when you were coming at them with four for hammer every turn, which is a great breakpoint attack. Again, I we're not cracking any eggs talking hammer based fatigue. We've been living through that for years now with Guardian Meta, and it is funny. Some people have been commenting uh, as Yoji was picking up steam. They're like, "Man, isn't it crazy how one health can do something so much better with Valda?" And um, you know, as compared to Valda, who has twenty one health. And realistically, they just don't play the same because if you have, I mean, if you compare the two, if you're using Valda but not using her ability, right, because we're never using Yoji's ability. So if you're playing Valda not using her ability, then it just makes sense to use Yoji, right? So I don't, I don't think it's a fair comparison because Valda plays, at least in theory, completely different. But I, I, I understand the sentiment. But then comes along Drone of Brutality. So, I mean, y'all get it now that everybody can run six drones if they so choose it's kind of hard to hammer people out when that's only a two block with a two for six that you can then keep a yellow and then swing a red that's tough right and and by tough it's very difficult to close so yoji's losing steam is he dead i mean to a certain extent a lot of folks who were looking at yoji who were attracted to that type of play style a lot of those folks have honestly moved on to like the Infinite Azuri type build, or I'm seeing a ton of that Nourishing Riptide build. That seems to be the more popular one because you can still ping with traps. Very, very good deck. Um, we'll see if they do something about it before Skirmish Season 7, which is coming later this summer. We will see. 
Let me know below if you think it should be touched or not. Let me know what your opinion is. All right, so what does Yoji do? Well, really, let's just talk. These right here. These are his closers, okay? These are what I recommend to be the closers. Now, you do have to play different against those decks than you would normally. The closers I'm talking about here are Blue Macho specifically. You, you could run Red Macho, but I think most of the time you run Blue Macho specifically so you can pitch Blue Macho so that you have it to swing hammer so that you'll have it late game. Uh, you also have Terra Sunder. Terra Sunder is obviously good. Now, to be clear here, the two discard doesn't really help you end game, but it is a dominate attack, which can force damage through. And when they only have drone in hand, and then all of a sudden you're coming in for it would be five in this case, presumably. Although actually, if you're if you are in game and only have a whole bunch of drones in hand, it might only end up being four dominate but that's two more damage that you're punching through that they can't block with on their drone and then you drone up rinse wash repeat and then buckle as well i know buckle is absolutely the less pop it's it's you know a it's not really poor man's terra sunder because it's the same cost in terms of the card cost in terms of the resource cost of the card um i know it's not super popular but i think adding it in for really the same effect and not being a completely worthless card in other matchups i think it's the right play here and then, of course, let's not forget Remembrance. Remembrance, playing it, probably one of these is the right call. And your Remembrance targets are going to be probably both your Machos as well as Terra Sunder. Probably, it's, I mean, it's the better one, even though the, let's be honest, in-game when you're discarding, it's both of both Terra Sunder and Buckle effectively read the same, right? When there's no net effect for their on hit, right? So that's really how he closes. So you're going to be pitching... Frankly, all of these are against the against someone who's like a drone. Obviously, if you're playing a normal game, just play a normal game. If you're playing against drone decks, which a lot of people are playing drone now, because why wouldn't you? You're going to have to make sure that you can serve your machos. Uh, the trick, though, with remembrance is to make sure that you are not getting stuck with the remembrance in hand and then having to take damage on that, because that stinks. That stinks. <laughs> Another important piece of the puzzle, kind of as you're ramping towards your endgame, is Righteous Cleansing. So I know a lot of people are very big on Pulverize. It's obviously a very good card, no question there. Uh, but I think that it's reasonable to consider swapping over to Righteous Cleansing. So reminder on this one, so this is a 7-drop yellow. Uh, but the Crush effect is if it deals 4 or more damage, which is Crush, look at the top 5 cards of their deck, banish 1 or more cards with the same name among them, then put the rest on top of their deck in any order. Right, so you can see where I'm going here. You hit them and you try to banish drones. And that's going to significantly help you close in game when they have less drones to do their drone cycling thing. So again, I, I know that Pulverize is very good. You could try running both, but I think with the amount of blues and what you're trying to do here, I think probably an easy course correction is swapping out some of the Pulverizes for one or even two Righteous Cleansings. Right now, also, let's talk drones. Uh, realistically, there's no reason for Yoji to not run drone himself. Uh, that said, I think that you don't run yellows in his. Now, I know I know the easy thing to do is to want to run six of them. But think about it this way, right? If you do end up getting, if you have that macho cost seven, okay, macho cost seven. Well, do the quick math on what you have to have in a three card hand in order to or a four card hand, a three pitch hand is what I mean, right? To be able to pay for that with a four card hand in a game, you'd have to have two blues and one other card. Well, that one other card can just as easily be a red. So I think you'd much rather have two reds and two blues not be playing the yellow because the blue drone can at least swing camera for three. Red drone can swing six for two right? Paying two into it. Yellow drone, sure, can swing, but it's not getting you the hammer that you need. And granted, it can pay for drone itself. So sure, you can go either. I, I do think you can go either way on that, but I think probably with all the other good stuff you have and how many three cost, like unmovables and stuff like that, I think probably you just run red and blue drone here. You're happy swinging your hammer for three, pitching a blue drone, but you're going to have other targets use drone to block, get on the bottom because that's what it's there for, and over and over and over. So I do think that, you know, in 
the old way of playing Yoji again against your own decks, the old way of playing Yoji's dead, right? It's not you're not going to be able to close out a game in today's Blitz format by swinging hammer. But that doesn't mean that Yoji can't close out games. And as we've talked about these three tools right here, and yes, there are others to be very clear. There are other ways to go over the top, but when you're thinking about in-game type stuff and what works in the deck for consistently consistency, I think these three drops that let you swing hammer for four, as well as the fact can do things themselves in-game, I think those are the way to close it out. So anyway, those are my thoughts on how Yoji can, that's what I've been very motivated about lately, as many of you can tell, is how to close out against drone, because it's definitely a thing. It has absolutely a thing. And uh, I think this is another way that it can be done. You just have to, you don't really even have to change his list all that much. Obviously, you have to find room for the drones. It's not that hard finding room for a blue and then two more reds. But yeah, you might even be stacking some of your very big attacks to do it. But keep on that life gain. Keep the drones. Keep cycling. Keep swinging hammer. And then close in game and just make sure you're saving them for in game. So anyway, that's my thoughts, my takes for all of our Yoji experts out there. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree, what your thoughts are, any other tips or tricks you have, and nothing else, folks. Thanks for joining me today, and go commando.